Sears is just about to disappear. Kmart and many other retailers are nothing but a distant memory. Car companies are now being added to the list of struggling corporations even though this industry was bailed out a decade ago. US government stimulus programs to keep them alive. No amount of money is enough. The entire economy is reliant on fiscal and monetary stimulus just to remain afloat. This won't end well. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at the corporations that are currently laying off massive amount of people. This has been going on primarily with retailers like Sears and Kmart, and we've seen this all throughout the years since the financial crisis. Nothing really stopped in that regard, but today we see other types of corporations doing the same thing. At the same time, we've been told that the economy is better than ever. I, of course, have a difference of opinion, but wanted to give you that information and then cover several other issues after that that coincides with this information. So let's begin by taking a look at Ford. Ford to cut thousands of jobs in turnaround plan. This was the news that had been a rumor previously but now has made it into the mainstream. Ford will lay off thousands of workers and slim its vehicle lineup across Europe in an effort to pull the region back into profit as part of the US car makers 14 billion dollar cost saving plan. This here apparently is going to involve as many as 24,000 jobs lost. We don't know if it's going to get there. That's according to the analysts and their predictions and they're generally not anywhere near correct when it comes to that. But I wanted to let you know the level at which they assume things will be. We're only going to know when it actually happens. So I'll give you the data at that time. But I wanted to make you aware of what they're saying is going to happen. Up to 24,000 jobs could be affected by the layoffs right now. We have seen other car companies do similar activities, letting people go as they love to say, but what's happening is that people end up without a job and that is so important for so many people. These car companies employ a lot of people, particularly in the United States. Those jobs have been shipped overseas and it's not good for the economy in general because they are generally well-paying jobs. These are needed. We we don't need more of the minimum wage type jobs. What we need are jobs that provide people with a career and a solution to the rising expenses that happen over the course of the years. They try to make this seem as if they're redesigning the company, they're restructuring, and they use all this simple sounding beautiful language, but unfortunately it is a lot worse than what they tell us. And of course they have to cover it up for obvious reasons. They have shareholders, they have investors. Jaguar Land Rover said Thursday it will cut about 10% of its workforce as part of its plan to restore profitability decimated by falling sales in China, a slump in diesel sales and uncertainty in the British market caused by Brexit negotiations. That's what they're saying. We'll see how many jobs are actually slashed. They're saying about 10%. That obviously is a big issue when a lot of these corporations are doing it all at the same time. So if you have an individual who works for one company, suddenly he's laid off. Most people have this simple argument that, hey, I'll just get a job at the other company. But they're all laying people off right now. They're not going to hire individuals. So you have to go into another industry and perhaps you're uncomfortable with that. Maybe you need retraining. Who knows what the situation would be, but it isn't pretty. BlackRock to cut 3% of its workforce in the coming weeks. This is the largest fund manager in the world. So they're cutting 500 jobs. It's not a huge change, of course, but that is 500 jobs. It's important to see this on a scale of the total in that given year. And we've seen thousands and thousands of jobs being slashed. And of course, it all adds up. This happens to be just one more corporation. So if you look at this BlackRock stock sitting at about 400 points today, if I go back over the last year, you can see how it has fallen. On a five year, you can see a different picture. Obviously, it had come up quite a bit over the years since the financial crisis, but has come down further and further and it's well, well into a bear market. This happens to coincide with all of the other global systemically important banks out there that have fallen as 
well. Many of the big financial institutions are suffering right now, and that's not a good sign for things to come. State Street plans to cut 15% of senior management starting Wednesday. The layoffs come as the asset manager targets cutting its workforce by up to 7,000 employees over five years. And that is under the assumption that things go the way they are now. Of course, that's not going to happen. Things will get worse and it will probably speed up that process. So this is what happens to so many corporations. They have a plan, something comes in the way, and of course, things get changed very rapidly. Deutsche Bank's management board has decided to cut the bonus pool by around 10% compared with 2017 as the German lender tries to juggle cost pressures with the concern of a talent drain. Now, this company has been hemorrhaging. It is one of the worst performing corporations of its size that we've seen. I've shown and documented the fall of one of the biggest companies in the world based on the amount of derivatives that they have. Last time I checked, it was approximately 50 trillion euro. This is absolutely massive, no matter how you look at this. And what are they talking about? Slashing the bonus pool by around 10%. That is nothing but hilarious. A little bit of comedy for you. Hope you enjoy that. This is a chart that corresponds to that. Shareholders suffer more. Deutsche Bank share price has fallen more than the bank has cut in compensation. You could see 2018, the stock had come down so significantly, annual change in share price. That's the orange type color there. And the black is the annual change in compensation costs. It's barely a blip on the screen beside that. Quite funny how we see it unfolding. Another cut, bonuses at Deutsche Bank could fall below 2 billion euro for 2018. Now, while they have been decreasing these over the years, the company has been doing worse and worse every single year. They have to fix the problems that exist here or this is going to become a very dangerous scenario for this company as well as how that affects all the other financial institutions doing business with this company as well as Germany and then the Eurozone and then it spreads out in that ripple effect. Speaking of Germany, German industry went into a sudden and unexpected collapse in November. The data is so bad that economists think it might be wrong. Now that is hilarious. Nevertheless, they agree that Germany may have been in a recession for the last two quarters of 2018. Germany is the largest economy in Europe and the fourth largest on the planet. So this is bad. And I totally agree with Business Insider in this case here. They've made some bold claims, as you can see throughout this article, that Germany may be in a recession. We'll see what the economists officially say as this comes out from the government. They might actually admit it, but suggest that the next month they'll be able to push that up in the following month and the following month and hopefully get that GDP into positive territory. And if they can produce those fake statistics, then of course they will be able to get out of that hole. Germany industrial production just giving you an idea of where things are I mean it's hard to see on this type of chart because it's quite involved quite messy but essentially what we see is a decline throughout 2018 compared to what we saw previously global m1 growth has declined substantially percentage year over year change that goes without saying you know you compare this to a lot of different charts that I've shown basically the weakness started a few years ago and it was the stock market in the United States States that was performing extremely well versus its peers throughout 2017 but as soon as 2018 came it was over the show was over and now we see in this regard here global m1 growth has actually declined quite a bit it's showing me what's really going on and of course when you look at industrial production growth that has been a problem particularly in 2018 as well this may be interesting to some. I wanted to include it. Where are the debt hotspots? Total debt versus the GDP percent. You could see here whether we are looking at the very left hand, which is Indonesia, or the very right side, Luxembourg. It's interesting to see where each country stands in terms of their debt, but it's broken down into non-financial corporations where Luxembourg is clearly ahead of the pack. Then we have households, general government, as well as the total 
okay so we're looking at this for example luxembourg as i said non-financial corporations are exceeding practically every other country's entire debt load but then we look at the households and it looks much smaller than many other countries when you see the general government that some countries like greece for example are far ahead of others so it's important not to take the calculation as a whole the total i think that's less important to see it when you break it down further it starts to make a lot more sense you could see where the debt is exactly and i wanted to finish off the video with a little bit of humor top investor who beat the market for years as the bull could last another decade okay the failing hedge fund managers are always willing to put their nose in and suggest to everybody that everything is okay and they did this for the years leading up to the financial crisis and they're doing it again today the hedge funds were incredibly terrible in their performance through 2018 many of them had to shut down only a few of them stayed open and yet they are still projecting their garbage into the media and unfortunately as you can see here it's not going to stop anytime soon that's all for this video if you found it informative please give me a thumbs up when you give me a thumbs up you're supporting this channel so i do appreciate that very much and last but not least if you want the financial education you were not taught in school these two books have everything that you need you can check it out at the link in the description and if you want the audiobook version you can get that at themoneygps.com